I would like to talk to you today about the Godhead Doctrine. Now we're going to start out this study by looking up every reference to uh, Trinity in the King James Bible. Okay? We're going to go over all the scriptures that talk about, that use the word Trinity. We'll say it that way. Okay? You ready? Okay, we're done. Um, next we're going to go to all the references that talk about the three persons. God in three persons, in other words. Okay? Every reference in, in the King James Bible to three persons pertain, as it pertains to the Trinity. Okay, you ready? All right, we're done. Uh, next, we're going to go to God the Son. Every reference in the King James Bible to God the Son. These are very important terms that prove the Trinity. All right? So let's turn in our Bibles. Actually, it's not because we're done. Um, how about God the Holy Spirit? Okay, um, we're done. And finally, my favorite Trinitarian term of them, of them all, uh, divine essence. Okay, So we're going to uh, look at every reference in our King James Bible to divine essence because that's very important there to talk about the thing that kind of connects all the members of all the three persons of the Trinity. So divine essence would surely be in there. So let's look it up. Okay, we're done. Uh, if you don't understand my sarcasm there, uh, those words don't appear in the King James Bible. Kind of odd because the most supposedly the most important doctrine of the Christian faith, the Trinity, if you're a Trinitarian, um, and the very key words of your system are not in the King James Bible. They had to be added to the King James Bible. Hmm. But now let's look up the actual biblical term of Godhead. Go first to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, we're going to be hitting a lot of scriptures today and going to be moving pretty quickly. So if I get there and I start reading before you can get there, pause the video and catch up to me then. Acts chapter 17, verse 29, For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. Now, right here you have a title. All right, a lot of people will say Godhead could also be translated as divinity or godhood that wouldn't make sense in the context of acts 17 29 it's talking about the godhead right the biblical name for jesus christ the son of god god the father and the holy ghost that's the godhead it's one person one being all right which we'll be proving in this study next let's go to romans chapter one we'll look at the next reference to the godhead Romans chapter 1, verse 20 through 23. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. That's where they'll come in and they'll say, what well, could be divinity or Godhood or whatever. But God has it in his perfect word, the King James Bible, as Godhead. And you say, well, I don't, I don't believe the King James Bible. I believe it's the Greek or the Hebrew. Okay, then use the Greek or the Hebrew. You stupid hypocrite, you. All right. If you're going to hold to using the King James Bible and calling this book God's Word, then it has to be perfect. Otherwise, your God can't write a perfect book. Think about that one. Verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. When they knew God, a past tense event, they glorified Him not as God. Why was Jesus Christ executed on the cross why was he crucified on the cross because he they considered him to be a man and he was making himself to be god and they're saying this is blasphemy when they knew god they glorified him not as god you see verse 22 professing themselves to be wise they became fools every trinitarian fits that verse and changed the glory of the uncorruptible god into an image made like to corruptible man Jesus the Son over here, God the Father over here, and to birds, <laughs> how about that? And four-footed beasts and creeping things. Jesus the Son, like this, and they got God the Father over here. You know, he has his little ball or whatever that he you know, likes to play with. And then you have the Holy Spirit, the dove, above them, floating there. And he's making his little divine essence, you know, spray out on them or whatever else. Tingle showers or something like that. I mean, if you've seen one of the videos I did about the uh, Mennonite tingle showers. I think it's on the secondary channel. Uh, no, that's a teaching that's far into Scripture. It's not two men and a bird. That's not the Godhead. That's a pagan trinity, a pagan deity. 
Uh, Colossians chapter 2, we'll look at the next one. Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, and we'll see the final reference to the word Godhead. Um, well, you need to respect my beliefs because I'm a Trinitarian. Your beliefs are wrong. If you believe in the Trinity, your beliefs are wrong, and you need to submit to the Word of God, the King James Bible. Your word Trinity is not in here. Your word three persons, plural persons, is never in here. Never once is it a reference to God. I should say it that way. It's persons is in there, but it's never once a reference to God, the Godhead, ever. Okay? Uh, so your speech should line up with the Scriptures. There's no God the Son in here or God the Holy Spirit, that title. There's no divine essence. Your system is based on lies. Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Beware lest any man spoil you through Trinitarianism, I mean, excuse me, philosophy, Trinitarianism, and vain deceit after the tradition of men. Things that are added to the scriptures are traditions of men. After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Who is Christ? He is God. Jesus Christ is God. He's not a third person or another person or the second member of the Trinity. He's God. And if he's God, then he has to be tied to the Father and to the Holy Spirit. They're one being. They don't shape shift like the modalists teach. They're one being. And I will be proving that throughout this study. Not after Christ, verse 8, and verse 9, for in him, in context it's Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. When Jesus Christ was walking around on the earth, he wasn't somehow the son and daddy's up in heaven someplace and they're separate persons and whatever else. No, the father is in heaven as the soul, but he's also in Jesus Christ at the same time. We are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now if you're saved. So we have a connection to heaven as well, just like Jesus Christ did. Right? But in the Godhead there, Jesus Christ is the Godhead. He is God manifest in the flesh. And if you come out as a Trinitarian and say, no, that's not true. He's him and the Father. They're two separate persons. You're a blasphemer. You're a heretic. And a lot of people are confused on the Trinity issue. I will grant you that. Right? It's very confusing when you look at it and you say, wait, okay, there's three separate persons, but there's not three separate gods, but there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and they're not the same, but so they're not separate gods, but they're all the same God, yet they're not the same person. What? It's confusion. God's not the author of confusion. People are confused about the Trinity. But that's why I'm doing this study. That's why I wrote my book right back here, The Godhead Doctrine. We'll be talking about that throughout this study. Okay, now, I'm going to give you the best way to destroy Trinitarianism and modalism. You can destroy both heresies with one simple argument. Go to the book of James very easy. You can get into all the debate. Well, what did it mean when Jesus was seated at the right hand of the Father? You know, well, that's a separation between body and soul, just like the saints in the book of Revelation, chapter 6, that they're saying there's their souls under the altar, and they're saying, how long, you know, until you avenge our blood on the, on the earth? They're talking about their physical blood that was shed down on the earth, and yet their soul's in heaven. There's separation there. That's all that it means. Jesus Christ has some prophecies that he needs to fulfill and whatever else, and so there's separation between the body, Jesus, and the Father, the soul, there. It's very easy if you just understand Scripture. It's not two separate persons. That's heresy, because there's no Scripture for that. But uh, I'll show you the quickest way to destroy any Trinitarian or any modalist. Right here it is, James chapter 3, verse 9. There, therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. We aren't little gods like some of the charismaniac nuts teach, but we are made after the similitude of God. We are similar to how God is made up. What is God? God is the body, Jesus Christ. You're looking, when they, people looked at him, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. And I'll be showing you lots more scriptures to tie into this. They're looking at Jesus Christ. They're seeing God manifest in the flesh. 
There he is. He's standing there. He's God. Inside of him, he has a soul that's eternal, that cannot be harmed, that's greater than the physical body in the sense of it's not going to feel the pain and everything of dying on the cross. Body, Jesus. Soul, the, the Father, God the Father. And the Spirit is the Holy Ghost. It's simple. Man is made after the similitude of God. God is three in one. These three are one. You see, man is three in one. Three separate things there, or parts, or whatever. Well, the word parts, that doesn't say three parts in the Bible. Okay, use your brain. <laughs> All right, common sense here, folks. What is a body, a soul, and a spirit? Well, it's not technically a part. You would have to say a thing, or perhaps a, you know, or you can just be simple and say parts. It's the three parts of man. Not that difficult. And to show you the proof of that, let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Right now, if you listen carefully, you can hear the pages rustling of the Trinitarians trying to find verses to tear down Jesus Christ. Listen really carefully. It's fascinating. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, you, and I pray, your, I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless, un, blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Three parts to man. Body, soul, spirit. It's right there. Well, I don't know if I can believe it. Well, then you have a problem with Scripture. Well, you know, I believe that, that God, you have God in eternity and God in time on earth. And that when, you know, they're there and, and you see them, they're shape-shifting and things. It's, that's modalism. Okay, that's not what I teach. That's not what the Bible teaches. Well, you see, I believe that God the Father is a spirit, and the Holy Spirit is a spirit, and then Jesus Christ has his own spirit and body and soul. Then you have three spirits, which contradicts Scripture, which says there is one spirit. There's only one spirit, and that's the Holy Spirit. There aren't three. Okay, so if you believe in a, a nine-person trinity where you have three separate persons, each with their own body, soul, spirit, that's heresy. If you believe in a five-part or whatever trinity, uh, that's a problem as well. Because then you have Jesus with three parts to him, and then the Father is a spirit, and the Holy Spirit's a spirit. Um, that's error as well, because again, you're back to three spirits. And it's interesting because there are three spirits that show up in the book of Revelation. Hmm. There aren't three spirits in God. Be real careful what you believe. Genesis chapter 1. The whole way to the beginning book of your Bible. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26 and 27. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us, plural, make man in our, plural, image. Which is not just singular. And after our likeness. That's plural. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Wait a second. Why is it in verse 26 it's plural, and in verse 27 it's singular? Now there's only two ways to get through that thing. Um... Either there's some kind of confusion there or whatever. He's speaking to angels or something there and they're, you know, he's saying in our image or whatever. Then the angels would have to look just like God. Or perhaps they're triplets. There's actually people that teach that. There's Catholic pictures that come out and whatever else of these Trinity triplets. They all look the same. That's why they have our image, but then you can only create in his own image. So uh, it's not talking about their physical appearance. Uh doesn't mean that. What it's talking about is body, soul, spirit. That's why there's plural, and yet it's just one body. It's one person. Okay, and show me any dictionary that says that person is just a kind of, I mean, maybe there are modern ones, but person could mean, you know, any number of, of people or something like this. You know, no, it's just one being composed of three parts, body, soul, spirit. If you believe the King James Bible, if you believe in philosophy and the traditions of men, well, then you can believe anything and teach anything about the scriptures. But you say, what? it doesn't make sense, though, plural and, and yet singular. 
show you a good one here. Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. Here's a good one for you. Verse 24 through 30. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint and as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. Thy name, it's singular. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Uh, which person was it that he saw? Just God. Just one person. You see? Let me give you an interesting little tie in there. Hosea chapter 12. Go towards the New Testament. If you're newly saved, you might have to look up, pause it and look up where uh, the book of Hosea is at. That's fine. Look up Hosea chapter 12. Hosea chapter 12, verses 2 through 5. This is a good one. The Lord also, or the Lord hath also a controversy with Judah, and will punish Jacob according to his ways, according to his doings, will he recompense him. He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with God. It's talking about Jacob here. Look at this, verse 4. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spake with God, right? There he spake with the, the one guy. It says, there he spake with us. Huh. Jacob says, I've seen God face to face. I've seen him. He's right here. One person. But our text there, verse 4, says he spake with us. Plural. Let us make man in our image. Hmm. What's going on? The body, the soul, the spirit are all present. Right there. And it doesn't say, let us make man in our images. Let us make man in our image. Three in one. It's just that simple. How many persons, I mean, oh, you're a Trinitarian. Well, this is heresy. I've never heard such, you know, okay. Smarty. Trinitarian smarty there. Um, are we made after the similitude of God? You say, well, yes, that's what the Bible says. Okay. Is God three persons? Well, of course God is three persons. God in three persons. You know, blessed blasphemy. No. God's three persons? Okay. Where are your other two persons? I'm looking at one right now. You're looking at one right now. Where are my other two persons? I'm made after the similitude of God, made after his likeness. God created man in his own image. All right. Where are my other two persons? You say, well, but see, the whole thing is the text here is talking about that, the, you know, it was kind of like a tag team thing where Jacob was wrestling with God, but then the other two persons were kind of standing off, you know, reaching their hand out over the ropes, you know, tag me in or something like this. They just The text doesn't say that. That's why it says us. Um, he spake with us. So, you know, he, was, he didn't wrestle with all three. They're just, you know, he just... You know, he wrestled with one, and then the other two were standing off to the side speaking or something. Uh, is that it? No, because let's continue. Verse 5. Even, there it says, there he spake with us, even the Lord God of hosts, the Lord is his memorial. <laughs> so it makes it singular. So there's no way to get around it as a Trinitarian. There were not all three persons standing there. It's one being that he wrestled with. Even the Lord God of hosts, and yet it says us. Well, you see, um, in the Hebrew, I think that the word could be better translated. At, okay, then you're not a Bible believer. You're a heretic. You see? It's really simple when you're honest. Next, next let's go to Hebrew chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6.
I've been studying this issue, issue for a long time. I have no time for radical, hardcore Trinitarians because they inwardly, secretly, they hate Jesus Christ. Don't even talk to me about it. They need to knock him down. I believe that Jesus is the most highly exalted being in the universe. There's nobody higher than Jesus Christ. Well, well let, me, let me look through the Bible and find places where I can just tear Jesus down. There's something wrong with you. And when I say that Jesus is God the Father, I'm saying it's the same being. Obviously, I'm smart enough to realize that there's separation there between a body and a soul. All right? But my body and my soul are one person. Your body and your soul are one person. They're not separated. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 6, verse 20. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, what's the name there? Jesus. Say it again one more time. Jesus. And one more, just for good measure. Jesus. Made in high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Who is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek? Jesus. Okay. J-E-S-U-S. -S. Jesus. You got that? Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1. For this, Melchizedek. It's connecting. For this, Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. No problem. Everybody, you know, the Trinitarians are nodding. Yeah, that's Jesus. Jesus, he's king of kings. You know, sure. But verse 3 comes up and all of a sudden we have a problem. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth the priest continually. And here's where the Trinitarians just come apart at the seams and they say, Oh, what do we do? Cuckoo, cuckoo. They can't handle this. Why? How could Jesus not have a father? He has God the Father. How could he not have a mother when he was born of the Virgin Mary? Without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, well, he died on the cross. Huh? Who is it? Who, uh, made like unto the Son of God. I, I, I don't get it because obviously, obviously the Son of God is Jesus, so it, it must be Shem. Oh, wait, he has a father, he has a mother, and, and he died. And, um, um, uh, uh, maybe uh, Enoch? Uh, no, he had a father and mother. Uh, uh, I don't know who it is. J-E-S-U-S. -S. Jesus. It's connected to verse chapter 6, verse 20. There's no question. You say, but I don't understand there, Brother Brian. How could it be Jesus when it says, without father, without mother? Because, if you remember in Hosea chapter 12, verse 4, he spake with us. Verse 5, even the Lord of God, God of hosts. So, God, as a being, can fulfill all the things here in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 3. That's what he can fulfill. Okay? Not really that difficult. And I mean, you have to just flat out deny the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 20, where it's plainly about Jesus. And you go down through chapter 7, it just lines up with Jesus Christ. But it's trying to identify Jesus to the Jewish people, many of whom have been deceived by Trinitarianism. And they're saying, I don't understand. Back in my Old Testament, it says that beside me there is no God. Beside me there is no Savior. There's one God. And I, I don't understand this. What's this God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit? Huh? You read the book of Acts and they're saying, you know, Paul says to him, I think it was, he says, uh, have you received the Holy Spirit? And they said, we don't even know if there is a Holy Spirit. They're confused. Okay? A Jew today does not understand the Godhead doctrine. It's confusing to them. And they see Jesus and they say, well, no, I don't think this guy could have been the guy because I'm hearing that Jesus that he's the second member of the Trinity and he's a separate person than the Father and he's called God the Son and and they're confused. And this book of Hebrews here is to clear up who Jesus Christ is for Jews that go into the time of Jacob's trouble. That's the whole point of the book of Hebrews. 
But we'll continue. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Give you lots more points here to prove that Jesus Christ is God, holy and completely God, meaning that he is the Father as one person and the Holy Spirit. Bodily, all in one being. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 5 through 6. For though there be God, for though there be that are called gods, like the Trinitarians, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Okay? You say, how does that work out? Very simple. Think about this. There is one God, the Father, and one Lord Jesus Christ. You say, well, then that's two different ones. Well, then you can't add. The word two isn't in there. It's one, and they're one being. Okay, well, you say, well, then you're saying that there's father and son or could be one being? Uh, yes, I'm a father and I'm a son at the same time. My dad gave birth to me and I gave birth to my son. <laughs> All right, you can be father and son at the same time. And again, there's a lot more I could cover in that, but let's look at the verse. Uh, the Father, there's one, but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Now, what's this talking about? It's talking about how we were created. God created us, but it's the soul there that gives life, but you see, a soul can't touch anything. I can't do this with my soul and touch the lens but I can with my physical body. So we are of the Father, we are created by God, but it's, or we are created of God, I will say, but it's by the body, all right? Um, trying to think of, of a uh, thing I can use here. Well, I'll just, I'll use this, okay? This design of my book right here on the Godhead doctrine, all right? This, you can create it in your mind and, and you know, and you can say, I, I'm trying to think of what it is. And inwardly, you can create it in terms of your soul, your spirit. You can, you're thinking, you're feeling how this thing should be done. But you need a body of flesh to be able to make this thing happen on a computer. To put the font in the right size. And should the name here be in the center? Should it be up? Should it be down? Should it be over this way? Should it be over that way? You need a body of flesh to be able to make this thing happen. That's what happened with God. Okay? God created, but the process of creation comes through Jesus Christ because he is God. He is the body, the physical body of the Godhead. All right? You say, I don't believe you. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. A soul is not going to be able to create certain things. You need a physical body. I put my heart and soul into that painting. Really? So in the room there was a disembodied soul painting? No. You put your heart and soul into it, but it's the body that has to do the painting. Give you another proof. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. Switching from Father to Son now in context. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Compare that to Acts 20, 28. You'll see an interesting uh, tie in there. But it's talking about Jesus here in context. Verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? The image of the invisible God. Is a soul visible? No man hath seen God at any time. You see, you can't see the soul. Where's my soul at right now? Can you see it? No. All you can see is my body of flesh. I am the image of the invisible soul of Brian Denlinger. You're looking at my body. You can't see my soul. You can't see my spirit. That's what Jesus Christ was. Man is made after the similitude of God. You see how easy this is. 
okay? I don't have two other persons running around town right now. One's up at my property splitting firewood. The other one's down getting groceries at the stores. No, one person made up of three parts, things, items, whatever you want to call it. Okay, let's use some common sense here. Verse 16, still speaking about Jesus Christ. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Well, if uh, you believe that God the Father and the Holy Spirit are separate persons than Jesus Christ the Son, then you would have to say that Jesus created the Father and the Holy Spirit. They're separate persons, aren't they? You see the problem you get into? It's the Godhead. Jesus Christ is the visible form of the Godhead. He is the physical body of the Godhead. They aren't different persons. That's heresy. Okay, verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Jesus might have the preeminence. So, so much for your uh, second member of the Trinity and, and knock him down a few levels and, well, you know, he's uh, all this other stuff. Next, let's go to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Show you some more good stuff here. John chapter 10, verse 27 through 30. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Jesus is speaking there. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Wait a second here. If they're two separate persons, does that mean two separate hands? Trinitarians, post your comment below. Is it one hand or two hands? No man is able to pluck them out of my hand. No man is able to pluck them out of my father's hands. Are they playing catch the Christian? Throw the Christian back and forth? Toss the Christian back? Or is it just one hand? One hand that has a body of flesh right here. Jesus Christ. And inside the hand is the soul. The invisible soul of God the Father. One being. He said, well, I, I, this is the heresy. Heresy. Verse 30, I and my Father are one, just one. Can you count Trinitarians? Well, they're, 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 they're one in essence, but they're two in person. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, then how does that verse work out then? You know, maybe I guess God had the Father has a Christian by one arm and Jesus the Son has a Christian by the other arm. You know, they're kind of maybe playing tug, tug the Christian, you know, or something. Stupid heresy. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 4. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Two there, right? Trinitarians? Two separate persons? In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb, two different thrones, two different God and the Lamb, and two different thrones. Is that it? They're Trinitarians? Let's see. The throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him? Singular? And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Wait a second. God and the Lamb, well, they're two separate things there in Revelation chapter 4 and 5. Well, I guess chapter 5 there. They're two separate, but yet here it's just they'll see him. Mm -hmm. You see, the work of Jesus Christ is done. And so the body and the soul come together. 
What did Paul say when he died? Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He's absent from his body. Some great saint dies, saved saint. Their body doesn't disappear. Their body goes into the grave, into the ground. But their soul goes to be with the Lord. They have different things to do. They're waiting for the resurrection. Second Corinthians chapter 4. There's one throne, brethren, and one being sitting on that throne, and that being is Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 4. If you believe anything else, you've been lied to. And it's not a, well, I can kind of still blend Trinitarianism. You can't blend Trinitarianism. It's not compatible with the Godhead doctrine. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Huh. The glory of God is visible in the face of Jesus Christ. The glory of God, the Father, in, as the soul. Jesus Christ is the physical body. Hmm. John chapter 1. The book of John chapter 1. Beginning in verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a separate God, a separate person. It doesn't say that. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, as we said earlier, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. If you're a Trinitarian, you don't comprehend who God really is, and you need to repent of your Trinitarianism, and modalism as well, by the way. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. As it reads over in the book of Romans, chapter 1, as we went over earlier. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the, gl the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Who is the word of God? Capital W. The manifest word of God is Jesus Christ. Jesus is God. See how simple that is? <laughs> Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah 9, verse 6. Another classic here from the Old Testament. Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Son. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now here's how the Trinitarians will handle this, because they're of their father, the devil. He was a liar from the beginning, and so are they. The Trinitarians will come along and they'll say, well, it just says his name will be called the Everlasting Father. Uh, so he's not really the Everlasting Father, it's just his name is the Everlasting Father. Okay, that makes no sense at all. So he's going around saying, I'm the Everlasting Father. When did Jesus Christ ever say, I am the Everlasting Father, that is my name? Um, he did say, although, I am, you know, which is the one of the titles of the Everlasting Father. I think that's interesting. But uh, no, his name is the Everlasting Father because he is the Everlasting Father. Okay. Number two way that the Trinitarian devils will handle this passage, they'll say, well, you see, um, the everlasting father there, it's the everlasting father of Israel. Um, well, then you have two fathers, God the Father and the everlasting father of Israel. You have to have two different father titles for the two different persons there, you see. Um, no, that's heresy because the New Testament teaches that there is one father. Okay, so they're not two fathers. Trinitarians like to hang themselves. Next, let's go to John chapter 14. 
two more places to turn to here. Then we'll wrap this whole thing up. John chapter 14. Because we've already gone over so many scriptures. The Trinitarians can't handle. They're just, they're waiting and they're saying, but, 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 wait, I have an argument against Jesus being the Father. Just wait, hold on, hold on. I, I have some arguments that I can tear Jesus Christ down and put him down. And I, you need to answer these or you can't prove. Why don't we go over the scriptures I just went over? Well, you'll avoid those. You'll just kind of say, yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. But what about this one? What about that one? I can prove that. Just tearing Jesus Christ down. John chapter 14, beginning in verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can't come to the Father, the soul, but by the physical blood that Jesus Christ shed on the cross. Okay? You can't kill a soul on the cross. A soul doesn't have blood. Jesus Christ had to come and physically take on a body of flesh in the likeness of sinful flesh. His flesh was not sinful. Don't believe anybody that says Jesus had sinful flesh. No, in the likeness of sinful flesh. But he never sinned. He was the spotless, pure Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And so he comes and he dies as a physical body. But the soul didn't die on the cross. All right, very important. But you can't get to the soul without going through the physical body that died, the blood that was shed. Verse 7. If ye, if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Huh? And now you have Philip the Trinitarian. He comes along and he says, okay, I'll straighten out the Lord with my amazing Trinitarian philosophical wisdom. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Where is the second person here? Or the, excuse me, the first person of the Trinity. Um, all I see here is you, Jesus. Well, kind of like Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord there, and, and you know, he says, I've seen God face to face. You know? Uh, I, I'm only seeing you, Jesus. Where's the Father? Show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Where's he at? Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He doesn't say, um, Have I been so long time with you, Philip, and, and you don't know my Father? He says, You don't know me. Show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. You don't know me, Philip? Hmm. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? If you've seen Jesus Christ, then you've seen the Father. They're not two separate persons. They're not identical twins. All right? Jesus Christ is God. Holy, completely God. I've been preaching that thing for years. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. You say, but it says that Jesus is in the Father. How could that be? Because they're one being. Okay? The Father's in Jesus. Jesus is in the Father. They're one in perfect fellowship. They're one being. Well, no, it's divine essence. Divine essence is a perfume for women. All right? Look it up. There's no divine essence in here. Okay? If you have divine essence, well, that's your business. You know, whatever. Don't spray any on me. No, thank you. I'm not into chemicals and things like that. <laughs> there's no divine essence. It's not talking about divine essence or, or you know, the deity and, the, and there's sort of the, you know, and all these blasphemous titles and things that come out, the humanity of Jesus. And all, it, there's no human word in here. There's no humanity in here. Watch out with that whole term there. But the whole point I'm trying to make is this Trinity teaching is satanic. It's heresy. It's adding to the scriptures, which is you know, warned about there and in, in all throughout the Bible, Proverbs 30, verses 5 through 6, Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 through 19. You don't add to God's book. It's a tradition of men. It's a philosophy, which I've proved. Finally, let's go to John chapter 8. There's a lot of Trinitarians that are confused, a lot of people that they believe, yeah, I believe Jesus is God. How does it all work out? I don't know. I haven't actually gone through the scriptures, but I believe, to, yeah, that Jesus is God. How does that work out with him and the Father and whatever? I don't know. 
And they might say, Trinity. I used to say Trinity. For years I'd preached and say, well, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but the word Trinity is not there, but we know that the concept of the Trinity, I'd repeat that because that's what I was taught. Right? But actually when you look at it for just going through the scriptures, you realize, no, actually the Trinity is a satanic heresy. And it is. You need to repent of that thing. John chapter 8, verse 19. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? So it's not just Philip that asked it later on in uh, John chapter 14. The Jews there are saying, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, You neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. How is that possible when no man has seen the father at any time? No man, none of, I mean, could any of those guys there have fulfilled that if God the Father is up in heaven? And that's the only place that God the Father is? Think about that. They're looking at God right there. In Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's what they're looking at. It's a heresy to teach that the Father and Jesus Christ are two separate persons. That is not true. Verse 20. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above, ye are of this world, I am not of this world. He's speaking as the Father there. Why? Because they're the same being. All right. The Father can speak through the mouth of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit can speak through the mouth of Jesus Christ. It's one person. But look at verse 24. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am He, ye shall die in your sins. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ is God the Father in terms of one being, obviously there's separation between body and soul, obviously. Don't fall for modalism, which says that there is no separation. There's separation there. But if you're saying that Jesus Christ is somehow a separate person, and he's just a man, whatever else, and God kind of put his divinity upon him, and just, you know, the Father just kind of said, oh, I'm going to give you some special little whatever power here, or something, then you're a heretic, and you're lost, and you're on your way to hell. I can promise you that. Um, if you're confused on the Trinity issue, I would recommend getting a copy of my book. You see it here behind me, but I'll show you this one. Um, this is the original one right here. It had actually a few mistakes in it that needed to be edited and corrected, which have been done in the official one that has been released here. But it is called The Godhead Doctrine. And this goes through a lot of scriptures, a lot more than I did in this study, and uh, shows all the arguments. It starts out, there's 21 sections in here. Um, and it goes through, and uh, three different sections, and those sections are Jesus Christ as God the Father in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ as God the Father in the New Testament, and common Trinitarian attacks on Jesus. All right, and then it has, of course, a preface, introduction, and the conclusion. So, right there you go. Um, I will put the links to this book down in the description box. Um, Oh, you're just trying to do this thing to sell your book. Well, if you believe that, I'm sorry you believe that way. But uh, this is a very important doctrine. And this is one that you can get and you can give to people that are hardcore into Trinitarianism. Um, absolutely. It's a, a good book. It's not definitive. It's not going to cover every single argument that Trinitarians can come up with. But it gives you enough. And if you say to me, well, what about this? What about that? Sometimes you have to just deal with these people and say, okay, if they really don't want the truth, they're just going to continue to come up with new questions and, and strifes of words and contentions, and you just have to walk away from them. But keep it very simple. Here's how it works. Do you believe that you are made after, made after the similitude of God according to the book of James, chapter 3? They say yes, okay? Do you have a body, soul, and spirit according to First Thessalonians, chapter 5? Yes, I do. Do you have three persons? Well, no, but okay, then if we're made after the similitude of God, if God is three persons, then where are your three persons? Argument's over, okay? 
well, okay, but I can go to this thing, but then you have to come right back to the similitude of God. So that's it. Um, don't let people tear down Jesus Christ. I will stand against the Trinity from now till the day I die because it is a wicked satanic heresy. It has been, it has crept in unawares through the Bible colleges and the seminaries and everything else, and it's made it into the pulpits uh, all across the world, and now you have people going around thinking that they're Orthodox and, and lining up with the Scriptures because they're Trinitarian, and they'll part company with people that are non-Trinitarian. Um, the Trinity is a satanic heresy, all right, and as is modalism, all right, and I condemn both movements in my book right there. So um, you need to study this issue. Because if you're going around and you're saying that Jesus Christ is not the Father, that they're uh, two separate persons, and you give Jesus a unique God title, God the Son, when that appears nowhere in your King James Bible, um, then you're a heretic. Plain and simple. So that is going to be it. Um, take some time to study this issue. Thank you for watching.